So, what frame rate is best when shooting on the Mini 4 Pro and to get that cinematic looking shot that we all want? Question, what kind of bear is best? It's a ridiculous question. Well, what if I was to tell you that there isn't one? There isn't a best frame rate. It all really depends on three main things that we're gonna cover in this video. So with that said, let's get into it. What is up you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Devin, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about frame rates on the Mini 4 Pro, and which one you should choose when creating cinematic looking shots for your videos. So as I said in the intro, there really isn't any one frame rate that is best for cinematic shots. I hate to be the one to break it to you. But to get a cinematic look to your videos and to get the best and most quality out of your drone, knowing and selecting the right frame rate is important. So when I say that there really isn't one frame rate that's best, that's true. And what that means is that really it depends on three main factors that you're gonna have to figure out and decide which ones are best for your video and your circumstance. There are some guidelines and some limiting factors that will help determine the best frame rate for what you need to shoot and what you're working on. So before we get into selecting the best frame rate for your situation, let's first talk about what exactly is a frame rate. Frame rate or frames per second or FPS is how many frames your camera records in the span of a second to create a motion picture. And that's what frame rate means. And the Mini 4 Pro can shoot quite a few different frame rate options, including uh, 4K at 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 48 frames per second, 50, 60, and even 100 frames per second, all in 4K on the Mini 4 Pro. You can also shoot up to 200 frames per second when shooting in 1080. So if you wanna pack in a ton of frames, you can shoot slow motion, really slow motion, up to 200 frames per second on the Mini 4 Pro. So now that we've talked about what frame rate is, how many frames you can shoot on the Mini 4 Pro, Let's talk about when trying to achieve a cinematic look to your footage, your frame rate also determines your shutter speed. And your shutter speed is part of the exposure triangle that you'll find throughout photography and videography. And the shutter speed refers to how fast your shutter opens within each frame of your frame rate. And you always want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. And what that's gonna do is allow for a natural looking motion blur to your footage. That's what you're gonna see across most films, and that's gonna give you that cinematic look. So if you're shooting 24 frames per second, you want your shutter speed at one over 1 48th of a second, or as close as you can get to it. If you're shooting at 30 frames per second, you wanna be at 1 60th of a second, and that's called the 180 degree rule. I don't know why they call it that. It has something to do with shutter angle and something in the movie biz that they, uh, they like to talk about. Yo, what's up, dude? What's up? I was gonna put you on speaker and uh, have you share some knowledge if if you're down with, if you know it, number one, because I didn't know, and I was like, I bet you Mitch might know. <laughs> what if I don't know it, then I'm freaking screwed. Do you know what the 180 degree rule is? I'm talking about frame rates on, uh, like how to choose your frame rate and why, and then your frame rate should always determine your shutter speed. Yeah, so your shutter angle, or 180 degrees. Yeah, they call it the 180 degree rule, but I really don't know why. <laughs> I was like, man, I sound like an idiot. It's because when a, ro a rotary disc shutter is a type of shutter, it is not notably used in motion picture cameras. Rotary shutters are semi-circular discs that spin in front of the film gate. So it has nothing, it doesn't technically talk about, or it doesn't apply to a digital camera because our shutters are different. But in, a, but in a motion picture camera, film camera, that disc was spinning and allowing light onto the film, but it had to match the, f the same rate as the film stock was traveling. Because if it didn't, then you're only getting parts of the film stock covered with light. 
That's it. That that makes sense now. Dang. Look at this learning, dude. Now you're going to sound so smart when you talk about it. Dude, you're going to sound so smart. So that factor alone is going to help make your footage look more cinematic. Not necessarily your frame rate alone. Sure, shooting in 24 frames per second can make it look cinematic. But if you're editing on a 24 frame timeline and you interpret your footage to fit that timeline and you have your shutter speed all matching that, then it's going to look cinematic. So don't just go off the fact that, hey, I'm shooting 24 frames per second, it's gonna look cinematic. There's other factors in mind there that are gonna build to creating a cinematic professional looking shot. And the frame rate is just part of that and knowing what frame rate to use at the right time and when and where is all part of it. So now that we know a little bit more about frame rate and shutter speed, how do we use that information to get the most out of our drone when creating cinematic looking shots? Well, like I said before, it comes down to three main factors. The first one being your editing timeline. You need to figure out whether you're gonna be editing to a 24 frame timeline, a 30 frame timeline, or something else. But typically 24 and 30 frames per second timeline editing wise is pretty standard depending on what look you're going for. Now a 24 frame timeline is what you pretty much see in most uh, Hollywood movies. And then 30 frames per second uh, timeline editing is typically what you'll see on TV. There's kind of a quick and simple way to figure out, hey, do I want it to look more like a movie or more like a reality TV show? From there, you can figure out whether or not you want your footage to be in real time or slow motion. So say that you're editing to a 30 frame per second timeline and you're shooting 30 frames per second footage, then that's gonna be real speed. They're gonna line up and match with each other. Now, if you were to shoot 60 frames per second and put that on your 30 frame timeline, you just doubled the frames within that second, giving you half speed footage. So you just slowed that down by 50%. And that's how you get good looking slow motion footage. So even if you put 100 frames per second and you interpret that footage to match your timeline, then now you have 100 frames spread out and you just created a lot more time to where those 30 frames spread out way more due to the 100 frames you just shot. I hope that makes sense. So if you want slow motion, shoot higher frames per second and then interpret that footage to your timeline and get that nice buttery slow motion to your video. And that leads into decision maker number two, is what are you shooting? If you're shooting landscapes, you might want it to be more real time. When you're up high with a drone, things naturally feel slower anyway. But if you're up close and personal and you're shooting action sports, you may want some slow motion footage and you wanna shoot 60 frames or 100 frames per second and put that on your 24 or 30 frame timeline and get ton of slow motion footage out of that. So a lot of what you're shooting can determine what frame rate you should choose. If you shot a landscape at 100 frames per second, it would be pretty slow and it would take forever to show what you're trying to show. Um, when you shoot 4K 60, you still get that HDR out of this drone. If you're shooting in normal mode, if you're shooting 24, you just get those higher bit rates you get it's just better quality. But again, if you want that slow motion, shoot those higher frame rates. The third thing that you wanna consider into your shooting is your light. And what I mean by your light being, what we talked about earlier is your frame rate determines your shutter speed and a higher shutter speed is gonna let in less light and a slower shutter speed is gonna let in more light. So if you wanna shoot slow motion footage, totally awesome, go for it you're gonna need a lot of light to allow for the frames and shutter speed to be accounted for and to be exposed properly. Or you can bump up your ISO, which can introduce light sensitivity, which will brighten your scene, but it could also introduce noise and grain to your footage, which you may not want. I always try to keep my ISO as low as possible, close to uh, 100 or 200 when shooting on the Mini 4 Pro. So just keep that in mind. The opposite is also true when shooting 24 frames per second. If you're in bright daylight, then you have a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second or something. It might be way too bright and you need to put an ND filter, which is gonna cut down the light on your sensor and will allow you to properly expose your image. I've got a whole other video that I'll link down below about getting the most out of your drone and to get cinematic looking shots out of your Mini 4 Pro. But today I just wanted to talk about frame rates and what frame rate you should be using and why. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. Hopefully it shined a little bit of light about what frame rates are and why you should choose your frame rate depending on your edit, what you're shooting, 
and maybe your light. Now again, the light you can always work around and everything is kind of up to your creative decision. So is there really a right or wrong frame rate to choose? Not really, but there are some rules to remember when setting your frame rate. So remember your shutter speed should always be double your frame rate and always try to shoot frames with your edit in mind. So knowing, hey, I'm gonna be editing to a 24 frame timeline. If I shoot 24 frames per second, this is gonna be real speed. If I'm shooting 24 frames per second and I'm gonna be on a 30 frame timeline, then this might look kind of weird and jittery and not good. And if I'm gonna shoot 100 frames per second, then know that that's gonna be really slow and I need to interpret it to my timeline to make sure it looks right and it gives me that buttery smooth slow motion that we all want. So anyway, if you found this video helpful, if you found this video entertaining, uh, leave it a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, also, if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe. I've got more stuff on this drone coming out. I've also got some uh, video projects in the works. So lots of fun stuff on this channel. Definitely stick around if you like this kind of stuff. So anyway, thank you so much and I'll see you in another video.